Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. Now today is the day when we finally start our new career mode. I am super, super excited to start this after Milestone, completely revamping the career mode and what I've seen so far, I am pretty hyped to get going. So if you are looking forward to this series, drop a like down below, subscribe to see more. We're gonna try and go for daily uploads as long as possible of career mode from today onwards. So we're gonna try our best to get as many episodes out and really capitalize on the the new game kind of have vibe and the the hype around the new game so we're gonna jump straight in and start a new career mode i cannot wait for this one so your debut season completing the final races of the moto 3 to prove your value and win yourself a saddle are you fast enough to race in moto gp define your career moto gp 23 is marked by key moments that will define your season placings podiums victories will allow you to change your experience in the world championship even radically Status and reputation. Every placing will contribute to making yourself known inside the paddock. If you want to race for the most prestigious teams, increase your status and fulfill the team objectives. The dream bike. During the Marco window, you can express your championship bike and team preferences, but remember, you will have to convince them on and off the track that you are the right choice for their ambitions. Constit continuously evolving, your rival's ability evolve gradually with each season, carrying forward your story in the World Championship. New roads, at the end of your debut season you can now decide whether to continue your career or start a new one in Moto3, Moto2 or MotoGP. So it looks like there is a bit of customization this year so it is pretty nice off the start. We are in the Vision Track team I believe. Yeah, so we're starting off from Vision Track, M Love, Michael Laverty's uh, team for bringing through young British riders. So, as an Irish, I take offense, but in fairness, his brother Eugene has a kind of academy for bringing through Irish riders. So, we're going to say I came from that, and I'm blowing everyone out of the water until we've ended up here. So, Rising Star finish in front of Rizuki Yamanak in the standings within the next two GPs. The intention of everyone in the paddock is focused on the latest Moto3 races where D. Ahern has a chance to win an apartment contract. You have one new message, so it looks like Yamanak is probably bashing me. We're at the last race of the season. Spite of a good debut, I don't think Ahern has a chance of finishing in front of me. The standings are clear, it won't be easy to change his old respond. I'll be good right now, right? I'll say I'll be I'll be um, pragmatic and not gonna slay him because it's a bit too early yet. So we'll uh, we'll see where that takes us. I'll close that. I'll go to the Grand Prix. So our first outing in Moto Three towards the end of the season. We are running number seventy-seven this year. A new number for me for GP twenty-three. Very interested to see how this goes. Probably catch you at the end of practice unless something interesting happens throughout the session. But I just want to get a feel for the bike and see where I'm at with the speed. So I've done a couple of laps in a row. Um, it feels like the AI's times are probably a bit out of out realistic. They're so quick. I'd like like I was catching my teammate. I just crashed on my last lap there into turn four. Um, just overriding it really to try and make up the lap time, but um. It feels like for the AI's lap times, they're just not going to be able to do that. Like 2.12, I'm doing a 2.15 and it's a clean lap. Now, fair enough, maybe the equipment I'm on isn't the best. But still, you would think that I wouldn't be two and a half seconds off when I know the lap time was good. Now, maybe stick a, a softer tyre in the rear, whatever, and drop the fuel load. Maybe I can get into the 14s. But even at that, then I'm still two full seconds off of what the uh, front runner seems to be doing. So, feel alright on the bike. Don't feel too bad, it's just I'm slightly slower than I thought I would be and I'm a lot further down the grid than I was kind of hoping to be. So one thing, again now, it's always been an issue with the Model Stone games is the simulated lap times and while I was in the pits, I uh, wanted to sim to about 20 minutes left and people are still improving. They're improving heavily. Then I went to go to track to see can I improve and it is raining so they're improving on a wet track so the lap times clearly are not actually with what they're doing. So we're going to end practice last, but there's not much you can do when they are pretty much cheating. And from what I could see, they seem to have a lot top end advantage over me. So it's going to be a bit of a weird one this season. So unfortunately, we are going through Q1 here in Sepang. Now I'm going to do a couple laps and qualifying here. See, can I get myself towards the front and I'll probably just show my quickest one. So we're going to just go for a couple laps, see where the pace is. 
in the other practice sessions they were doing two twelves again in the dry so realistically I'm going to have to find a couple of seconds even if I am to challenge so as we come into the final corner this has been my first clean lap it's been terrible if we get into the line I reckon I'm still going to be pretty much last the more you push these Model 3 bikes the more the throttle becomes an issue with the bike sitting up so it's actually quite unrideable at the moment 215.3 so we've finished pretty much the session, it looks like P8, we've done a 15.3, I've stuck a software tyre in and it's made the bike very annoying, it wheelies all the time, even in like second gear it just wants to wheelie when you pull out of the corner, so uh, I'm starting to notice, as we have run out of fuel, that uh, when you start to push these Model 3 bikes, when you want to pick up the throttle a bit more aggressively, it actually really makes these a little bit unrideable because you just ride these bikes so much full throttle that the bike just understeers. So I think that's where we're losing all the time to is just the application of the throttle. So there's not really much I can actually do about that. So I'm overriding in every other aspect and uh, yeah, not being able to make the difference just because of the way our physics clearly don't match the AI's physics, which has been an issue before in GP19. So unfortunately, it looks like career mode at the moment, especially for Model 3, is a bit of an uphill task. So for race day, it is absolutely pissing it down. So I've done no wet weather riding on a Model 3 bike. I'm starting last. I've changed my setup before the race to see can I get some better corner exit just the way the bike rides off. I've just slightly changed to see can I get a better, uh, just better throttle application really. Now I don't know if it's gonna work in the rain, it might be even worse. But yeah, I don't really know what to expect unfortunately. It's going to be really tough with the AI being so good. But look at that. Look at me turning underneath everyone. If I can only do that in the race, we'll see. Looks like the AI have the wet physics and I have the dry physics because I'm getting full lean. But anyway, let's jump into it and see how it goes. Who will celebrate victory in the Malaysian Grand Prix? Riders have completed their warm up lap and are lined up on the Sapan grid, ready for the op. Here we go. No game audio at the start, it's been an issue in a couple of games. Not a good launch. Up through the gears we go, straight into Slipstream of the Rise in front. After we send it down into turn one, that's a big send, Dylan, that's a big send, that's a big send. It looks to have worked. Oh, the bike does not turn in the rain. Right in here in the middle of the pack, contact with nearly everyone. We'll drive out of there. Okay, yeah, I seem to have so much more exit grip than me. So far, all my time is being made up on the brakes, which is the most risky. Oh, contact with the first hat on my outside, and I was kind of tall about. Three away, through turn five. Just looks like they have so much more grip. My bike is pumping and swinging at the rear. So again, like I said, first time riding in the wet in this game and this class anyway. So, oh, okay, lost the rear. We are starting to go backwards. Yeah, we're nearly last again. So it looks like there's not much I can do in these conditions. It looks like the AI again, AI just have a different physics to me. I have all my time on entry to the corner, which is, like I said, the most dangerous. Jesus, by turn. And we are back to last, so it's me and Crasco battling it out for last, as it has been in most people's career modes from what I've seen. So, kind of annoying that the career mode has been put out in this state that the IR basically on a different physics model to me now. I can understand that they can be quicker than me, that's fine. I'm on a back marker team, we'll say. Oh my god, the bike just does not turn. How are they turning it that much better than me, like? It's going to be a long ass race if this is what I have to do with it. So, as we come to the end of lap two here, it's clear the eye just have so much more Edge grip, the bike turns so much better for them. I'm losing everything in the rest of the track. The only place I gain is into the heavy braking zones. But usually they're followed by a hairpin, which they can just turn and basically tear back all the time. I'm already 11 seconds behind the leaders. Now, I want to stress this is on 120% DI, so the hardest DI. So maybe 
it's just a step too far but usually it doesn't feel like it's this much cheating for the eye whereas they just have clearly more grip than I do they don't suffer from the throttle thing where the bike just goes straight they can get on the throttle as I lose the rear nice and early and it just right out of the corner whereas I cannot do that so unfortunately it just looks like the AI are on a completely different physics and that was one of the biggest issues so never mind the difficulty just the, the disparity in physics and the, the game being completely different for the AI is making it a lot harder for me to even get near them so maybe for the next episode probably will drop the difficulty but for now this is a tough race and I'm even falling away from the back of Anna Carrasco So we are catching Carrasco and it is drying up so I'm wondering will we get a red flag. Also absolutely overheating my front and I have a little theory on why I'm doing that and I'll explain here in a second. I just want to make sure I get this corner nailed. The front is starting to chatter quite a bit. So because the bike is so, I'm going to say bad, out of the corner in terms of it just does not want to turn when you get on the accelerator. When you open the throttle up and you just want to drive out it just goes straight. All your time is made up on braking and that is kind of what I'm doing and we've caught Carrasco now am I only catching Carrasco because I'd like to know if I'm catching the rest of the field too that would be nice to see can we make an old comeback here we are four seconds under my previous PB down into the 23s I don't even know what the leaders are doing but we're finally getting ourselves closer so when you're putting so much load through the front tyre you're absolutely eating it, so it's getting so hot. A lot of people I saw talking about how they may be trying to simulate the, the Michelin front tire. Obviously, in order 3, you've done that, so maybe it just kind of carried over. I do kind of see maybe, yeah, that they they have tried to add in that the game is a bit more sensitive to the front tire to be a bit more realistic. But I just think it's because you're pushing the front so hard to make up for the lack of rideability on corner exit because of the throttle picking the bike up so much that you're, we're all, without knowing it, you come in prime Alex Barras from braking as late as possible. And we are down! The front end just lets go. Oh, Sess is interrupted. Return to pit. Change bike. So, that is really weird timing. Finish getting their bikes ready, and the riders oh. have just completed the warm up lap. Everything's ready for the new start when the lights go out. So it looks like, well it is, it's, we have a new, a new race. So I'm going to go, right, a fresh hard rear. I'm going to go, I'm going to have to go medium front because of the heat. So we're going to start last, but we might actually have a chance now in this dry because it dried up and we have a few laps left. So it went for me crashing out on, on dry track on a really bad front wet tyre. Just managed to get it back to the pits, obviously. And we get to go again, so... Maybe my race isn't over yet. Who will celebrate victory in the Malaysian Group? So you game I'll do this time, that's good. It's a much better start. It's the spray coming up off the tyres. I wouldn't like seeing that if I was on a, a dry track. Or dry tyres, at least. Big sand incoming. Oh, this feels amazing already because the bike gets lean angle now. That Yamanak I've just picked up. I believe so. No, it was for Foley. Big sand. It's now a five lap race, so they don't carry over, so it's a whole new race we're doing. Oh, it's actually hard to get back into the rhythm even on the wet tires for so long now. This just shows that we just don't have the pace because they're just absolutely riding up to the back of some corner exit. Don't break late as always.
So we go around the outside. Oh! It's big sand. Oh, that was a big hunter of pink cars there. Slow the bike down. Get a good exit. Thank you for calling. Looks like we might be in a bit of trouble with the fuel. Look at the speed advantage. Thankfully, he for some, some reason decided to back out of it. They break quite early though. So we get another position. Get contact in from the Husky Man. Event. Straight into a slipstream though. We're going to keep them power 2, right? Nah, half of power 3. Just don't have the, the legs to keep with them. Release the brake out to the inside. So we're nearly getting our ejector of a beat in Yamanaka. Up the inside we go. It's risky into turn two. Not much I can really do when I get on the throttle and the bike just understeers into the guy. Big send coming again. It's all going to be about the big sends in this one. We need to get up a few more positions to get the objective a bit easier. I still think the AI difficulty is a bit off because of, like, he just roared around the outside of me, like, and I'm absolutely on the limit in the corners. If that doesn't show that they have different AI physics to us, I don't know what will. Oh, we're gonna hit Kelso? No, we're not. Run straight on though, because I try and stop the bike a bit harder. Good run out though. So, coming on to half race distance. Fuel should be okay. Or just. Okay, we're. Yamanaka's yeah, making moves though, because now we're not in leading after gaining that position. So, we're gonna have to take Kelso now to beat our objective of getting Yamanaka. I don't even know where on track he is, to be honest. And he's just gone down a position there because I've got my one point again ahead of him. But the Husqvarna just rides alongside me. Thankfully we can do this for him. Oh, that was risky. I literally just threw it across the front. Hoping the front end would stick and it did, thankfully. Just look how they get away mid-corner. I cannot do anything about it. Like what we're going to do when we get to like the likes of Saxony and stuff. But the whole track just is that one long corner. Oh, the throttle is really killing me. If we didn't have strong braking, we would be in absolutely nowhere in this race. We still are going to absolutely know we're down P11, we're not doing great. It's going to just turn underneath me. I'm going to try and, I would say cut back, but as soon as I pick up the throttle, the way just understeers off the track nearly. So, I'm going to put pace to that opportunity. We're going to turn tight here through here. Again, we pick him up. Second time we've done that today. Just about ahead of Yamanaka. I believe I can beat him to the line if we keep this up because I'll outbreak him into this corner. Just slipstream till now, pull out a slipstream, and bang. We get it stopped. Gotta make sure we get it turned. So late on the power. We can make the break though. Just pick up a bit of slipstream. 216s. 3 seconds off the leader, it's a reason we're down in P11 here. It looks like the medium tyre was the front tyre to go, it's not overheating yet and I'm really taking liberties with this front end. If you can't tell. He's 
he's there again. I actually don't, he won't be there when we get to the breaking zone. Got a good exit that time. Just throw it in really aggressive. We're going to see the Husqvarna any second now. There he is, and he just knocked me wide. That's killed me. Penultimate lap here, we don't have much time to be scobbling with him. I need to get ahead of him and stay ahead of him at this rate. Now we're going to get caught by the KTM, are we? I've been breaking late in here, this time I'm going to have to break ridiculously late. A bit like that. Release the brake, pick him up slightly. Oh, and he turns on me, I have to pick it up. I was close to crashing, and then we get a wheelie, because these Model 3 bikes are known for their extreme torque, aren't they? Oh my god. That should have been a crash. I think we might have lost him. I don't think we can make up the gap, because there's not enough. I'm taking all the inside curve, because I can't turn the bike like they can. No, I'm really on the limit. Not even in the slipstream, but thankfully, big heavy braking zone coming up. I'm gonna go around to power two because I need the juice. Oh, we're gonna get the move done, are we? Or not? I'm gonna stick behind them because I want the slipstream. Power one, actually, for this one. Actually, I can't afford it. He's still pulling away too much. Right, now we got the power one for the whole first sector. On the outside of him. Nicely done! Touched the curb, almost died. Oh, front went! How did I stay on? Thought I was down there, I was convinced I was down. Happens when you kind of ride like Marcus and you're just taking everything on the corner entry. He's the inside. So he goes, maybe they're going wider, maybe they're taking a different swooping line, but even I do that, I can't match him. He just rolls through the corner so much nicer than I can. No, it's not what I want to see. No, 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 it's all coming off now. Try to go on the outside, that was never going to work. We'll get far probably back alright, but it's not him that I'm worried about. It's this man in front. They are. Didn't like that nice at all. So not looking good on fuel, are we? According to the fuel tank, we have a lot of fuel though, so I'm not going to worry about that. Maybe the calculation is off. Thank you. Yeah, Manaki is behind me. I think that's just the point in the championship we're worrying about, so. Every point here will count though. Oh, he's gonna look the inside, I'm gonna just leave it off. Try and get the exit on Nepa. Yeah, we've got lots of here, we're gonna go power three. There should be at least one position into the final corner. And maybe for as well, maybe no. If I can keep Nepa I'll be happy. It's going to be P13 from La. Milestone and their curbs. Milestone and the curbs. While the riders enjoy a well-deserved lap of honour, let's take a look at the final results of this Moto3 race. So, Holgado wins it. Marrera in P2 and Asuma Ayumo Sasaki comes home in P3. We score points, P14, should have been P13, but, well, you saw what happened with drone eyes. We do beat Yamanaka, which was the goal. Now, we still look to be behind them in the championship, so we will have to go again. But I'm going to definitely drop the difficulty for the next episode. Just the way they can ride is clearly not kind of fair to what I can do, so... Um, it's going to be a lot harder for me to keep going at that speed. So, I nearly crashed so many times in that. And, uh, yeah, it was just pretty hard work, really. 
Here we come into turn two on the last lap. This is where I screened when I lost the front. You'll see here, just touch with the car, the front is gone. We are so lucky to even have finished that race. So P14 in the end isn't the worst result, but man, that was close to being a zero. So I have made my objective finish in the top 15, so I did score points, just about. But we are going to leave it there for episode one. It's safe to say the game doesn't have all the flaws ironed out yet, but it is quite fun. I like this new career mode, it's something different, and uh, it definitely gives it a nice, fresh feeling. We're two points behind Yamanaki in the championship standing, so maybe, just maybe, in the last two races, we might actually be able to do this. But thank you for watching today. If you did enjoy, drop a like down below, subscribe to see more, and I should catch you all in a future video. Thanks for watching, see you soon.